Indian Express, 6th of April 2024, India has the following message for China, abide by the standards others are expected to follow or face reprimand. China is a belligerent entity that disregards its regulations. In December 2021, when word spread that China had renamed geographical entities in Arunachal Pradesh, specific social media devotees adopted a tit-for-tat stance. Indian names were bestowed upon cities located in Tibet and China. When Beijing was referred to as Bujang Nagar, Lhasa was renamed Laxmangar. Yunnan was called Yanane Puram, Shanghai was called Sanghaipur, Chengdu was called Nu Chandigar, Hubei was called Hanumangar, and Guangzhou was called Gandhi Nagar. These were merely social media activists engaging in light-hearted banter while inactive due to COVID restrictions. The Chinese initiative to introduce standardized geographical nomenclature in Zhangnan, the region they designate for Arunachal Pradesh, commenced in 2017 by renaming six locations. Then, 15 more were introduced in 2021, followed by 11 more in 2023. 30 new locations were added to the list in 2024, including 12 mountains, 11 residential areas, 4 rivers, 1 lake, 1 mountain pass, and even a parcel of land. The Indian Ministry of External Affairs acted appropriately when it rejected the renaming to Masha. China's ceaseless efforts to designate locations in the Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh have persisted. We vehemently reject such endeavors, said Randir Jaiswal, the External Affairs Ministry spokesperson. He invented historical claims by China. This insanity of China, a civilizational nation with an invented historical memory, is not without reason. The claims made pertain to the long term. An instance of literary allusion to the historical persona of Zheng He occurred during the early 1900s. This novel continues to serve as a point of reference for Chinese scholars who, a century later, intend to investigate the routes and destinations of his voyages to stake historical claims to them. It recently dispatched purported research vessels to the coast of Sri Lanka, asserting that Zheng had visited the nation during the 15th century. Furthermore, about Arunachal Pradesh, the Chinese leadership had previously asserted that the state contained the graves of their ancestors and that their descendants ought to be permitted to visit and pray at them. These claims are illogical and were created in the present day. However, China employs history as a strategic tool to further its rise. China must be confronted with a comprehension of its civilizational nature and the ability to retaliate precisely where it stings. Minister of External Affairs S. J. Shankar did precisely that during his final week of March visit to the Philippines. India's Unwavering Position Historically, India has refrained from broadening its arenas of involvement. Much to the dismay of its Quad allies, Delhi resolutely declined to assume any responsibility for a prospective conflict in the Western Pacific. However, Jay Shankar significantly diverged from that stance in the Philippines by assuring the hosts of India's support. Our firm belief is that strict adherence to a rules-based order is most conducive to the advancement and prosperity of this region. UNCLO 1982, which established the convention governing the seas, is especially significant. It is mandatory for all parties to fully comply with it, both in written and verbal form. I would like to extend once more India's unequivocal support to the Philippines for safeguarding its national sovereignty. Jay Shankar stated. Additionally, according to the Philippine News Agency, Jay Shankar reassured President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. that India maintains a very resolute stance on the disputes in the South China Sea and recognizes the legitimacy of the Permanent Court of Arbitration's 2016 ruling nullifying China's claim over the Philippines' waters. Furthermore, it has been reported that he has indicated an interest in joining the Philippines as a charter member to counter China's aggression in the South China Sea. He said India was prepared to assist the Philippines regardless of the repercussions they might face. The action taken by the Indian leadership is audacious. India has consistently maintained its adherence as a signatory to the UNCLO regime, notwithstanding instances in which rulings have contradicted its statements. Nevertheless, it was not until Enrique Manalo, the foreign minister of the Philippines, arrived in New Delhi for a bilateral dialogue last year that a statement urging China to comply with the tribunal's 2016 ruling was made public. Jay Shankar, in return for the visit from the previous week, not only reaffirmed the statement above but also showcased India's emergence on the international platform by expressing its preparedness to engage in a distant conflict. India's response was unpredictable and accompanied by vain threats. The unwavering stance adopted by India elicited an expected reaction from China. Global Times wrote, 
Jayshankar's visit is not solely for diplomatic purposes, it claimed that India's motivation was to bring closer to itself nations that have territorial sovereignty disputes with China. According to the Chinese mouthpiece, India expects a protracted entanglement between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea, which would deplete China's strategic resources, tarnish China's reputation abroad, and divert Chinese attention away from India-related matters. The effectiveness of Jay Shankar's statement is evident in the fruitless threats made by Chinese spokespersons, who claimed that India's engagement in the South China Sea will likewise yield substantial adverse consequences for the bilateral relations between China and India. This compelled China to maintain a vigilant stance in anticipation of a potential attempt by the Indian government to incite further unrest. India is not a combatant but rather a responsible nation. The leadership aspires to exert responsible and influential influence in international affairs. During a recent telephone conversation with U.S. President Joe Biden, Chinese President Xi Jinping enumerated three principles of amicable relations between China and the United States. Harmony must be esteemed, stability must take precedence, and maintaining credibility is crucial. India expects the Chinese leadership to reciprocate its approach towards itself and other nations. China is not an exception to India's desire for all countries to adhere to a rules-based international order. From Manila, that was Jay Shankar's central message.